Hi guys, in this video, I'm going to cover the two questions about the economic fluctuation in chapter 11. So take a look at the question, an economy begins in long run equilibrium and then a change in government regulation allows banks to start paying interest on checking accounts. We call that the money stock is a sum of the currency and demand deposit, including the checking accounts. That being said, the M equals a C plus D, which we started in chapter four. So the left-hand side, the M denotes money supply. And the right-hand side, we have a C plus D, C is a currency and D is a demanded deposit. And then it says that, so this regulatory change makes holding money more attractive. So household, they hold more money than the demanded deposit. Then what happened? Well, take a look at question number A. How does this change affect the demand for money? Because household, they want to hold more money, that means that demand for money is increased, right? So the answer is a straightforward. Now, question number B, what happens to the velocity of money? Well, it should be decreased. Why is that? Using your intuition. So you guys hold the cash on your hand, then it circulates less than before. So that means the velocity is decreased. Now, take a look at question number C. If the Fed, the central bank, keeps the money supply constant, so M is a fixed, what will happen to output and prices in the short run and in the long run? Okay, so as we covered in the lecture 11, so when the velocity is decreased, we know that the aggregate demand curve shift to the left. So let me cover that one one more time. So the y-axis is the price level, x-axis is the output or the real GDP. And we have a downward sloping aggregate demand curve. And we have a horizontal short run aggregate supply curve because the prices are sticky in the short run. And we have a body call long run aggregate supply curve because in the long run, you are using the full resources. You have the Y bar, which is same as Apple K bar and L bar. And we call it the natural level of the output or the potential GDP. Now, this AD curve captures this equation Y equals C plus I plus G, okay? And also you can derive this downward sloping demand curve by using the quantity equation, MV equals PY, M over P equals one over V times Y. Now, given that money supply is a fix, so that means that money is not changed, and in the short run prices are sticky. Now, when the velocity is decreased, what happened? Well, in order to hold this equality, the output has to be decreased. Why is that? Well, one over V is increased and in order to hold this equality, Y has to be decreased. So that being said, this event shift this AD curve to the left. So that being said, I can say this event is a negative demand shock. So AD2. So what will happen to output and prices in the short run? Well, in the short run, you have the this output, Y2. And the Y2 is less than the Y bar, and we call it this is the stationary gap. So that's the short run equilibrium point B. Well, this is the original equilibrium point A. Now, over time, this short run aggregate supply curve shift to the downward like this, so that's the SLAS2. Then we're going to achieve the equilibrium point C. Okay? The reason that this short run aggregate supply curve shift to the downward over time is falling. Because we have the recessionary gap, our output is less than the long run level of the output. That being said, that we have a loss of the unemployed workers. Right? When we have a loss of the unemployed workers, and the companies, when they negotiate with the uh, workers, they can lower the wage. When they lower the wage, the cost of the production goes down. When the cost of the production goes down, you can lower the price of your output. So the price becomes P2, which is less than the P bar. Okay? So that being said, output in the short run is decreased, but output goes back to the original level of the Y bar in the long run. In the short run, prices stays the same as a P bar, but in the long run, we face deflation and we have the P2. Okay, that's the answer for C. Now, question number D. If the goal of the Fed is to stabilize the price level, should the Fed keep the money supply constant in response to this regulatory change? If not, what should it do and why? Well, let me copy and paste this graph. 
and then analyze it. Give me one second. So copy and paste into here. Okay, so here's a graph. Now, this is 81 and this is 82. And it says, Fed, they don't want to have the lower price level, right? So that being said, they want to keep this P bar that what they need to do. Well, when AD curve shifts to the left, they can implement the expansion monetary policy and they go back to this, uh, they move this AD curve to the AD one. How? They just need to supply more money than this AD curve shift to the right. What does it mean? Well, go back to this quantity equation, M over P equals one over V times Y. When V is decreased, this whole thing goes up, right? Now, instead of the changing, oh, sorry, so the previous part, we assume that the money supply is a fixed, right? Now, if you shift this uh, M, I'm sorry, if you lazy money supply, then we can keep this equality. So that being said, by putting more money into the market, we can go back to this AD curve, AD1, okay? So the answer for D is they put more money into the market than they keep this AD1, okay? Now question number E, if the goal of the Fed is to stabilize output, how would your answer to part D change? Well, it's exactly the same. Well, when you have the short run equilibrium point B due to the decrease in velocity, then you have the less output. So that is a Y2, which is less than the Y bar. But when you implement expansion rate policy, you put more money into the market than this AD2 shift to the AD1 then you can achieve the original level of the output Y bar. So the answers are exactly the same. Now, let's go to the following question. So suppose a Fed resource reduces the money supply by 5%, assume that the velocity of money is constant. So that means the velocity does not change over time. First question, what happens to the aggregate demand curve? Now let's use the quantity equation, MV equals PY. And then you may know that how to convert it to the gross rate form. So if you convert it to the gross rate form from the level, so percent change of the M plus percent change of the velocity equals percent change of the price plus percent change of the output. But since the question said the velocity is not changed over time, so this one is a zero. Then we have a percent change of the M equals percent change of the price. That is a by definition inflation plus percent change of the output. So we can have this equation. Uh, inflation equals percent change of the M minus percent change of the output growth, percent change of the output, that's the output growth. Now, when money supply is decreased by 5%, then this output is decreased. Why is that? Well, left-hand side is decreased, then right-hand side has to be decreased to hold this identity. So when you draw the graph, again, we are using the ADIS model. So Y axis is the price level, X axis is the output. We have a downward sloping aggregate demand curve. And we have horizontal shown aggregate supply curve with the fixed price level P bar because in the shown prices are sticky. And this is a long run aggregate supply curve which is a particle in the long run, we have this Y bar. Now, when the central bank reduces the money supply by 5%, we know that this AD curve shift to the left like this. So let me call it the AD2. So that's the answer for A. Now, question number B, what happens to the output and the price level in the short run and in the long run? Give a precise numerical answer. Well, we can see that the output is decreased and this one is a Y2, right? That's a short run equilibrium B. Now, over time, this short run aggregate supply curve shift to the downward like this. So that's the SRAS2. Then we have the long run equilibrium point C. So in the short run B, the short run equilibrium B, the output is decreased how much? By 5%. Why is that? You can use this equation. So in the short run prices are sticky, 
So let me plug in the numbers. So inflation, pi equals percent change of the M minus percent change of the output. So the left-hand side, the inflation is zero because in the short run prices are sticky. And then percent change of the M is a five. So then the percent change of the Y has to be, has to be five. So that being said, what happened? Oh, sorry. It's because that they reduce the money supply. This one is a negative five, right? So that means here, let me arrange this equation. So percent change of the M equals negative inflation minus percent change of the output. So this one is a negative 5%. Then what happened? This one is zero and this one is the output, right? That being said, when the money supply is decreased by 5%, then the output is decreased by the 5%, okay? Uh, give me one second. Let me rewrite out the equation. So here, again, the left-hand side, the inflation is zero because in the short run, prices are sticky. So price is not changed. But then here, percent change of the M is a negative 5%. And here we have a ne negative percent change of the output. In order to make a 0% here, this percent change of the output has to be negative five. So because an negative negative is positive, it makes a zero, right? So output is decreased by the 5% in the short run. In the long run, however, output goes back to the original level, as you can see here, equilibrium point C. Output goes back to the original level Y bar. But then the price, we have the P2. So then we want to know the, how much it affects price level. Well, again, you use this equation, pi equals percent change of the M minus percent change of the Y. So percent change of the M is a negative 5%, but then the this one, percent change of the output is zero, right? Because you see that the output goes back to the original level. So if this one is a zero, then what do you see? Inflation is negative 5%. So the price level is decreased by 5%. So you have the deflation, right? Okay? All right, guys, that's it. See you next time.